Hi, I'm Susan Abramson, the rabbi of Temple Shalom Emmeth in Burlington, Massachusetts, the author of Hala, A Jewish Guide to the Torah, and the Rabbi Rockapower series of Jewish children's books featuring my alter ego, Rabbi Rocket Power, the first ever female rabbi superhero. In today's episode, we will zoom in on the oldest religious institution in Burlington. The United Church of Christ Congregational was founded in 1732. For many years, it served as the town's meeting house, as well as its first church. It is one of the most liberal Protestant churches in Burlington. I will interview Reverend Angela Wells, take a tour of the building, see a snippet of the children's Christmas pageant, and find out all the ways in which this wonderful community lives out its faith by helping to make the world a better place. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking. Though the time be far, I know that come it will. When each nation shall each other bless, peace the earth shall fill. God shall reign over the earth on that day. God shall be one, your name it shall be one. Reverend Wells, it's so great to have you here, and it's been a pleasure to get to know you over the past few years, and, and I've really appreciated your voice for social justice in our community and being a, an active member of our Burlington Clergy Association. So I just wanted to ask you a little, to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you came to be a minister and how you came to Burlington. Sure, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I have been serving the Burlington Church for four years. I started mm -hmm. in December 2012, and I was raised in Florida originally. I was raised in the church. My, there's lots of clergy on both sides of my family all through the generations. Mm -hmm. Both my parents are ordained clergy as well as my uncle and my grandfather was a pastor. Wow. And when I was in college, again, I went to college in Florida, I was studying sociology and I was learning about all these social injustices like systemic racism and sexism and oppression of mm -hmm. all sorts of marginalized people. And it was during my college years when I realized I really needed to have a career in social service. I wanted to contribute to the common good. It was actually my, my grandfather's funeral. He was a pastor. He passed away in 2007. Mm -hmm. And I heard at his funeral service all these testimonies about the lives that he had impacted and the lives he'd touched through being a pastor and through his whole entire career in ministry and through the church. And it was really in that moment that I realized, you know, if I can be half the pastor that he was throughout his life, then I will have fulfilled my calling here on earth and I will have done what I was supposed to do with my time here. And that's when I decided to go to seminary. Mm -hmm. And I went to seminary right after college, Union Theological Seminary in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I got a master's degree in divinity, which is a three-year master's degree. And that's required in our tradition to become ordained. So what I also wanted to ask you was mm -hmm. to tell us a little bit about uh, your specific faith, like what the tenets are of it, mm -hmm. like how it, it's unique from the other denominations of Protestantism, mm -hmm. maybe a word about what Protestantism is all about. So the, the Protestant Church was formed after the Protestant Reformation mm -hmm. when Martin Luther separated from the Catholic Church because he there were a lot of reasons that he w did not want to align himself with the Catholic Church anymore. Mm -hmm. And he had, they say that he had 95 theses in which he articulated everything that he disagreed with. And so the Protestant Reformation was born and the Protestant Church separated from the Catholic Church. And we have a lot of similarities. You know, we follow Jesus, we're all Christian, we're all Trinitarian, but we have seminal differences in that, like I said, we only, we only have two sacraments. Our clergy can, you know, get married and have families. Uh, the Protestant Church has a lot of diversity within it because we have so many denominations within Protestantism. But like, for example, in our church, like the local church calls their own pastor, the local church owns their own property. And these are things that are different from the Catholic tradition. Mm -hmm. Our congregation has a very broad theological spectrum. Mm. And so there are people sitting in the pews who probably believe that, you know, Jesus was just a Middle Eastern man who lived 2,000 years ago mm -hmm. and, and was a prophet and a teacher, and, and all the way to the other end of the spectrum in which people absolutely believe that he was the begotten Son of God mm -hmm. and, that, and that he was divine, even though 
not everyone agrees and we don't always see eye to eye and we don't always have the same theological beliefs that we do all follow the teachings of Jesus and one important aspect of that was how he extended love and radical welcome and inclusivity to everybody he ministered to especially mm -hmm. on the margins and so a priority for our congregation is to be inclusive and welcoming of everybody in the life of our community regardless of race age gender economic means sexual orientation whatever other demographics you want to include and so that that's our highest priority is that we make sure everyone knows that they are welcome and we see our calling in the world to is to um, help spread the message that every person is a beloved child of God created in God's image. That was a wonderful explanation <laughs> and, and, uh, and I think now we're ready to, to take a tour of the UCC church and I'm, I'm really excited to have you show me around and I'm also excited to meet a lot of your parishioners who will be there to help explain uh, what your church is all about. So let's head over to the UCC. Wonderful, I'm looking forward to having you. We've made our way over to the United Church of Christ Congregational here in Burlington. We're glad to have you, and now we'll make our way into the building, into the sanctuary. Thanks so much for having us. We're, it's great to be here. We're happy to have you. Let's go on in. Okay. And here we are in the vestibule of our sanctuary. Mm -hmm. This is the first room you come into from the outside. Mm -hmm. And one tradition of our church is that all members and regular attenders, we ask them to wear name tags so that not only we know each other's names, but so that we're hospitable to visitors. So where we're standing now, where you see these two pillars, actually there used to be a wall here, which divided the front part of the building from the back half. Mm -hmm. And this was the original meeting house of the town where town business, town meeting, town politics took place. And so the back room was where the meetings were held, the town meetings, and the front room was where the sanctuary was. This is our front of our sanctuary called the chancel, and this is where the leaders of our worship services sit and stand when they lead worship. This is my pulpit, and I preach from here every Sunday, and I sit in this chair behind me. And this is our lay leader's pulpit, and the lay leader is a member of our congregation who assists with leading worship. And right here behind you, we have our offering table, and our offering table has offering plates that are used to collect money every Sunday. And of course we have our cross and we have two candles actually which represent the two manifestations of Jesus, Jesus in human form, Jesus of Nazareth, and then Jesus in divine form, Jesus the Christ. And so here we have our baptismal font which we use on Sundays in which someone in our church, either a child or an adult, is being baptized. And we take water from the pitcher and we pour it into the basin. And then during the part of the service where the person's being baptized, I sprinkle water on their forehead. We believe that baptism welcomes you into the full global Christian family and names you as a beloved child of God. Hi, my name is Mike Trito. I'm church historian here at the UCC Congregational Church. In colonial times and up until 1833, church attendance in Massachusetts was mandatory. The towns were actually established around the churches. The Puritans established the Congregational Churches. In 1732, the first meeting house was built here on what was called Forest Field. It was a plain Georgian style building the interior had pew boxes, which were sold to help raise funds for the building. In 1846, it was remodeled as a Greek revival style. In 1888, it was rebuilt, remodeled as it is today. Today, this is one of the oldest original frame church buildings in Massachusetts. I'm Jan Costa. I am the chairperson of the Christian Education Committee. And here at UCC, we plan on uh, offering Christian education for all members of the congregation. And for children in first grade through seventh grade, that would be the Sunday school class. But going on from there, um, the Sunday school class does a pageant every year at Christmas time, which is like a play which um, celebrates the birth of Jesus. Hello, 
My name is Michael Lewis. I am the moderator at the UCC Church in Burlington. I run the parish council meetings. Parish council is the governing body for all the different committees that report to the, the church. Our finances are come through uh, pledges by the members of the, the church. Hello, my name is Jean Williamson, and I've been a member of this church since 1960. In 2007, our church <clears throat> voted to become open and affirming. It means that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. After all, we are all God's children. My name is Sebastian Grieep, G-R-I-E-P. I am eight years old and three quarters. The pro and the project I do is the green team. What the green team means is for people that are part of the green team to help the earth and try to recycle more. Hi, my name is Sam Felicia and I'm going to talk about Team Awesome, which is UCC's um, youth outreach ministry. Our first mission trip was to a Native American reservation in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. We helped people build and um, paint wheelchair ramps because a lot of the people in this population struggle with diabetes and they've actually had amputations because of it. In 2012, we traveled to New Orleans to help with Hurricane Katrina relief. We went to Appalachia and we worked in um, West Virginia, which is a very underserved population with lots of really poor people. We did lots of painting, interior, exterior. My name is Nancy. Nancy Todd. I'm a member of the Missions, the Board of Missions here at our church. Uh, we're a group of 10 people that have the responsibility and the privilege of taking 10% of the pledged income and dispersing it to various benevolences. We also uh, do some active mission work. We go to Rosie's Place, a homeless shelter in Boston, three times a year. There are many members of the congregation very active with people helping people. We just try to act in, in a way that helps the greater community and the world. I'm Joe Stoddard. I'm the music director here at UCC Burlington. Uh, music is an integral part of the worship experience here. My job is to make sure that the music amplifies the message of the Sunday sermon and the Sunday scriptures. And to that end, we have three hymns every Sunday that everyone sings, and we also have one or two choir anthems. Hi, my name is Gordon Brown. I'm a member of this church, and I have the pleasure and the honor of being a member of the Called to Care team. We meet once a month, and we decide who needs a visit, who needs a call, who needs a food, and so on. I'm Nancy Todd, and I'm a member of the C4C group here at the church. We're crafting for a cause. We started out being knitting for a cause. We were a bunch of ladies that got together and we made things like prayer squares, which are a little, uh, a little square with an ex explanatory tag on it. My name is Lucy Damiani and I'm going to talk to you about people helping people. In 1734, when this church was built, it, came, it was built on a very short uh, foundation. About 200 years later, the congregation decided that it, they needed a basement. So a basement was in fact dug out underneath the sanctuary and that created a large function room and a kitchen and that space was named after Ori Skelton and was subsequently called Skelton Hall. When I joined the church in the early 1970s, Ori Skelton's nephew had a very active personal ministry in Burlington functioning as the Burlington Santa. At Christmas time, he delivered hats and mittens and gifts of toys to families in need so that they would have some Christmas for their kids. But he also realized that these families were in need of food throughout the year. So with the support of this congregation and the minister and Miriam Malkasian and other leading clergy members in, throughout town, he formed uh, the Burlington Pantry. And the food for the Burlington Pantry was gathered in the kitchen of Skelton Hall for two years until it outgrew its space. 
Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about our church calendar and the holidays that we celebrate. And this episode is airing in December, and during the four weeks of December, we celebrate a season called Advent, which is this blue section right here of our pie chart. And the, those are the four Sundays preceding Christmas Day. And each Sunday, we light a candle on our Advent wreath. And then one of our most important services of our church here is Christmas Eve, in which we light the fifth candle, which is celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And that service is always the evening of Christmas Eve. And then the day after Christmas Eve, of course, is Christmas Day, in which we celebrate Jesus' birth. Jesus was born on Christmas. He helps other people. He's friends with God. And he keeps kindness and peace to the animals so no one can hurt them. And then we have a season after Christmas Day. We go into Epiphany and the season after Epiphany for a few weeks, which leads us into probably our most important season of the church year, which is called Lent. And that begins on Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is 47 days before Easter Sunday. And on Ash Wednesday, we have a worship service celebrating the beginning of the Lenten season, and we receive ashes um, on our foreheads. And so then we celebrate Le or recognize the season of Lent for six weeks, which ends on Easter Sunday. However, the Sunday before Easter is called Palm Sunday, and that's also a very important holiday in the life of our church, and we tell the story of Jesus processing into Jerusalem for the Jewish holy days on a donkey, and he's riding in to Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday. And that begins Holy Week, and Holy Week the Thursday of Holy Week is Monday Thursday, in which we celebrate Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples before he was crucified, and then he was crucified on what we call Good Friday, and then there's Holy Saturday, which immediately precedes Easter Sunday, which is our most important holiday of our church year. We celebrate Christ's resurrection from the tomb and overcoming life after death. And then after Easter, Sunday, we have a season of Easter. Easter is not only one day, as most people think it is. It's actually an entire season, which leads us into Pentecost. Pentecost is 50 days after Easter, hence the word penta, meaning 50. So 50 days after Easter, and that's when we celebrate the birth of the Christian church. It's all, all often called the church's birthday, because that's when we tell the story of the disciples receiving the Holy Spirit through tongues of fire, as told in our scriptures. And then we have Trinity Sunday, which leads us into the season after Pentecost, this really big green section here we also call Ordinary Time, which goes uh, for almost half the year and then leads us right back into the season of Advent the following year. And that is our annual church calendar. May we all be inspired by the UCC's faith-based mission to welcome and respect all people as children of God. Shalom, Salam, Shanti, Peace.